Oh my gosh, I am so glad to finally see you here. I was so worried about you. Oh my goodness. Oh, let me take this mask off. It's really hard dealing with this situation all the time, but I am really happy to see you. If you don't know who I am, well, I'm Master Omar Morneau, the founder and lead artist of OAM Studios of Pleasanton and Tracy here in beautiful California. We hope you have all been enjoying our online classes, and, as always, please let us know if there are any changes you would like to see to our format. With things being as they are, we have to evolve and adapt for the studio to survive, and meeting your needs are the most important thing to us. So far, it looks like the online classes have been a great success, though they have not been working out for the youngest of our apprentices. We have been finding out that our youngest students, around the ages of four to five and a half, need in-person classes to maintain focus. I'm really sorry it has not been working out for them. Hopefully this free cartoon lesson will do the trick for not only our members but also children across the world. We encourage you all to share this video with your friends and family so that other kids can have a fun learning experience too. Oh, I would really like to thank William for having his friend Kay Lynn in Minnesota join our online art classes. It really means a lot to us that families from outside the Bay Area are enjoying the lessons and in doing so are helping to support our school from total economic annihilation. What's really cool is that they are allowing William to learn art with his friends back in his old home across the country. That's been making me consider continuing the online classes even after things slowly work themselves back to normalcy. Well, I think that's it for all our announcements. Let's get drawing. Alora, the first question on your mind might be, what is an art recipe? Well, a recipe is a word usually associated with baking, but it basically means directions that are used for coming out with a usual response. If you make cookies and you use the same recipe, then your cookies should come out the same. So artists need recipes too, believe it or not, because it is often that you will be asked by somebody, can you draw? And you will confidently say, yes, yes I can. Then the next words coming from your friend will most likely be, draw me something. At which point you'd best be prepared with a nice recipe to prove your skills and your reputation. Another annual reason to have some art recipes prepared is because every year, right before summer break, there is yearbook signing. If you are known as the artist of the school, then you will most likely be asked to draw in a few of those yearbooks. And you will also be lugging around a dozen or so yearbooks around campus with you, as I did every year. Sometimes you just need to appease your fans on the spot and doodle something really quickly and that's when your art recipes come in handy. So we will be working on the very first and most reliable art recipe today, which is a horse portrait. Please remember that you can practice this over and over again, so don't feel rushed. You can pause at any moment and also you may just want to watch it the first time, then view it again and again and again. I don't think that that raises my views on YouTube, but if it does, then I encourage you to practice this once a day for a month. Now, it is my personal belief that it is important to know as much as possible about what you are going to be drawing. 
Even information and facts that have nothing to do with drawing that subject matter or improving your ability to do so whatsoever. There was a time during my studies in art that I would make sure to look up seven facts about everything I would draw. If it was a tree, then I would study the tree. If it was a person, then I would either ask them seven questions or nowadays you can just Facebook stalk them. Just kidding. Don't do that. But I do encourage you to study what you draw. Let's talk about horses then. Horses have several names and titles. An adult female horse is referred to as a mare. If the female is too young to be a mare, then she is referred to as a filly. Some, however, may prefer to be called by the pronouns they and them or any of the other 72 gender pronouns. <clears throat> Right, so a male adult horse is called a stallion, and sometimes uh, in particular situations they are uh, referred to as um, a gelding. Younger ones that are not adults are called a colt. Depending on how you draw your horse portrait, you might find that it is one of those five by surprise. Usually my students don't know what gender it is until they complete the drawing and they name it and decide. These days, it may be even non-binary. Okay, one more thing. If you like this video and you want to see more Cartoon Master Omar drawing, then please subscribe and support us through Patreon. Make sure you tell your parents to dish out a few dollars. Hey, did you say doll hairs? Um, actually, no. I said dollars. Dollars. Oh, okay. Okay, so without further ado, let's get out our paper, eraser, and a pencil. All right, so I am going to turn on my phone here so that you can see me at the same time. Then, like so many masterpieces made through human history, we want to start by drawing a circle. Sometimes it's tough to tell how big to draw, so I'm temporarily going to divide the page up into quarters. Uh, with these pink dashed lines and you can see the circle is maybe one-eighth the size of the page but it does not matter the size for your first attempt so just follow along or watch this time it's no big deal then we are going to draw a line starting at the top of the circle from the green go arrow to the red stop arrow at about 225 degrees southwest just like so. This line is basically a guideline that we will eventually erase but is going to start giving us structure for the horse's forehead and bridge of nose. Just beneath that, we are going to draw another line that is not perfectly parallel, but instead aims to be a bit closer than the previous line. This guideline that will also eventually be erased is going to be the area between the horse's cheek and chin groove. Please remember to draw these guidelines softly so that we don't have any pencil scars remaining on our paper afterward. Next, we are going to close that shape off starting from the green arrow to the red stop arrow. So you don't have to draw this next part, but I want to show you that the distance out from the circle to the muzzle is about half the distance from the center of the circle to the edge of the circle, also known as the radius of the circle. Go ahead and adjust your drawing if you need to right now. Next, we want to lightly sketch a square that will basically be the structure for us to build our horse's muzzle, nostrils, and mouth upon. I am going to also lightly sketch the halfway mark on the left side of the square because that will eventually help me draw the size of the nostril. Uh, 
This line up here is going to be where we eventually draw in the forelock, ears, and pole of our horse. The forelock is the lock of hair that grows on the horse's forehead between its ears. That location between the ears is also known as the pole, which is the occipital protrusion at the back of the horse's skull. I know that some of the students here are going to become veterinarians someday, so that's why I'm going to throw out these words. Our very next guideline is for the horse's crest and mane, which is sort of like the top of the neck. And the line afterward is for the horse's neck and throat region. At the very tippity top corner, we are going to draw an acute angle as a guide for the size of our horse's ear. Look how acute that is. So, so cute. Right ahead of it, we want to basically repeat the same acute angle for the other ear that is lying on the other side of the head. Here, I'm going to draw four equal size circles within our primary circle so that I can get an accurate size for my horse's eye. You can draw only the top one if you like, but drawing all four will make yours more accurate because then you have to force four equal circles within the larger circle. Let's cut the top circle in half so that we can use the bottom remaining half of that small circle and fill it completely in with the shape that will be our horse's eye. Pay super close attention to the shape and curves of the eye and try to get it just like mine. Right above the eye, we want to add a mound-like curve for its eyelid crease, and also one beneath for some baggy eye. You know what? Let's go ahead and erase the distance example I drew if you did it also. It's only going to get in the way at this point. If we want our horse to breathe, then we need a nostril in the top corner of our square here. Again, pay attention to the shape and details because that's what artists do. The bottom right line is important too because it's the outer lip of the nostril and is pretty much just echoing the side shape of the nostril. These next two guidelines I'm drawing are going to help our aim as we draw the shape of the muzzle, upper lip, and mouth edge in our square. For our muzzle and upper lip, we want to start at where the nose bridge guideline meets our square. And then like a pear shape, we want to work our way to the bottom halfway mark, at which point we shoot up at a sharp angle to the right to hit our left halfway mark. If our horse is going to eat them apples, we need the lower lip, under lip, and the chin groove. Let's start at the bottom halfway mark, cut off the bottom right corner of our square. Then, when we arrive at the right side halfway mark, we can shoot out towards our primary circle. Don't listen to me though, just follow along. Sometimes the best way to communicate is visually. A picture is worth a thousand words, we like to say.
All right, grab that eraser of yours and let's get rid of our guidelines on the muzzle so we can see our work more clearly. Don't erase your detail lines, just the geometric guides we made together. This next line is a subtle curve and it is the area between the chin groove and the cheeks. Let's erase all our circle guides since we don't need them anymore. And again, we want to be extra careful not to hurt our horse's eye, so be careful and use a small eraser or a piece of paper to block the lines you do not want to erase. You can mask it off by using another sheet of paper, or you can cut off a small piece of your eraser if you need something a lot more tiny. Lots of little tricks to take care of this. Of all my years drawing horses, this is actually my favorite line to draw, the cheek line. Do you have any favorite lines to draw? Well, you will if you eventually are a serious artist. Now we want to make a really nice curve for the forehead and a slight curve also for the nose bridge. And we start between the ears and work our way down towards the nostril. Okay, let's make a couple lines right above the forehead for the clump of hair known as the forelock. Uh, I used to just call them bangs back in the day. Now we're going to make a couple stretched S curves for the ears and for the back of the ear also a long curvy line. Then we want to add some stretch curve lines over our stringent guidelines so that we don't have a robot horse, but instead have a nice organic horse. The first line we are drawing here is the throat latch of our horse, and the second is the length of the neck. The closer you stay to our guideline, the thicker and more tough our horse will end up looking. The further away, the thinner, younger, and more elegant your horse will eventually appear. Along and arcing above the top guideline is where we're drawing the horse's crest, or the top of the neck. Then, above the crest, we are going to draw the mane. Now, this does not have to look like mine. It won't make much difference if it's not exactly like mine either. And it's actually really a good time to give your horse its own hairstyle anyway. So relax and don't feel like you have to be exactly like me with this line, okay? If you want your horse's mane to be falling over on the opposite side of your horse, then you are basically all done with your sketch. Otherwise, let's try adding some clumps of hair to our side of the picture plane. Let's do a single hair clump with one single point 
followed by a couple more of those and go ahead and experiment and try different shapes they don't have to be exactly like mine eventually too we'll go ahead and add like a double pointed clump um, but go all the way across the length of the crest and the length of the mane All right, our hair is all done, so let's go ahead and get ready to erase. So grab your eraser, and let's start off by erasing our first primary circle that we drew. And go ahead and be very careful again not to erase any of the important details that we've added in our drawing. Now let's concentrate on erasing the nose bridge guideline that we did. I think this was our second line that we started with. Now we can start erasing our third guideline, which was the one that goes from the cheek to the chin latch. Now we have a lot of detail to get around and in between when we start erasing the muzzle cap, the guideline that we had that goes from the nostril area down to the lips. Let's erase the guideline that is in between the forelock lines, so the, the hairs, remember the bangs between the ears, we can get rid of all the lines in between there. Now we can go ahead and erase the guidelines that were for the crest and the mane, and then we can also get the guideline that is for the throat. We got ourselves in a really tight position here, but let's go ahead and try our best to erase our guidelines around the ears, okay? Make sure you do your very best, as usual, to not erase the detail lines that we work so hard on in these areas. And finally, if you drew the clumps of hair cascading towards us, then you need to erase the horse's crest between each clump of hair so that the mane does not appear transparent. And there you go. Congratulations, you have finished your first art recipe. Great work. You have earned the horse patch for sketching this lesson. I'll let you know how to earn the brass medal during the next lesson. We would really love to see your work in all of its majestic glory and give you compliments and advice. So, when you have time, please tweet at OAM Studios hashtag horsehead. That info is in the comments section if you forget. Well, we really hope you enjoyed the art recipe. Please return the favor by subscribing to our YouTube page. You can entice us to make more videos like this one by supporting us at our Patreon page or direct support page. Links are below the videos in the comments section. 
We also have live online art classes through the Zoom platform and old-fashioned brick-and-mortar lessons. Visit our site at www.oamstudios.com. I had a really great time making this art lesson for you and your families. I just wanted to do something to help everyone through the pandemic, and I realize it's nothing compared to what the brave doctors and nurses are doing for our community and the whole wide world. We thank you all so much for your dedication and service. Finalmente, io voglio dire che mi manchi i miei amici di Italia. Espero che tutti sono sani e salvi, specialmente mi amica Luana di Ancona e Ilaria vicino Torino in Piccolo Caluso. Thank you so much for watching and see you at our next episode.